17 hours. No slowing down. Chris Nickich has exactly 17 hours to complete one of the most torturous races in the world, an Ironman triathlon. Keep this pace up, right like this. 17 hours to swim 2.4 miles, bike 112 miles, and run a full 26.2 mile marathon. There are no exceptions to this rule. We're almost done. Not even for the 21 year old who is the first ever Ironman competitor with Down syndrome. On October 6, 1999, Chris Nickich became one of about 6,000 babies born in the U.S. each year with Down syndrome, a condition that often results in cognitive impairment, developmental disabilities, and in some cases, heart defects. He was born with two holes in his heart. And so he had open heart surgery um, at just under five months. So that was his first challenge. They have things like small ear uh, canals, which means the slightest little cold turns into something big. And so he's been sick his whole life. Nothing's gonna hurt, sweet pea, okay? Sure. Heart surgery, four major ear surgeries, therapy sessions just to learn how to hold a fork. Nothing has come easy for Chris. When you have a child with Down syndrome, you don't fit in. They don't get invited to parties. They don't get invited to anything. I remember one time, he said uh, a kid called me stupid and ugly. And I said, well, how did that make you feel? And he looked up and he said, it made me feel not happy. Everything you do is a challenge, it's a fight. Um, other fathers don't get to experience that. You have to battle everything in order to, to, to just get them to be included. When doctors say I can do anything, the first thing came out of my mouth. Don't talk to Dr. Chris loved basketball and golf. But in 2017, Chris's dad, Nick, discovered a special Olympics triathlon program. What happens if I beat you? The first step was we said, look, let's go find something we can do together, right? Because I know he likes to have fun. And I know we needed to interact together. And it was just the most amazing thing that's ever happened. When he first started, Chris could barely swim the length of a pool or even run a mile. He couldn't pedal a bike more than a few yards without falling. But he kept practicing. The reason it takes kids with Down syndrome forever to learn how to bike is they have poor balance and their reaction time is slow. Come on, finish it! His first competition out of the 10 athletes in our area, he came in dead last. And he was happy when he got his award and we praised him because he didn't quit. They helped me, they encouraged me, and because of all this, I'm included. Come on! But Nick Nickage wanted his son to take the next step in his training. He found Dan Grebe, a veteran of 15 Ironman triathlons. I had never met someone with Down syndrome, and the first thing he wants to do is give me a hug. <laughs> you know, and he says, what's up, man? And he gives me a big hug. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, you did it. In October 2019, Nick came up with a life-changing idea for Chris. I thought, what if Chris could do something that's never been done? What an impact that would have on his life and others like him around the world. Then so I said, look, what if we just do an Ironman? He says, OK, what's that? I said, well, it's just a little longer than a sprint. And he said, OK, let's do it, Dad. We're going to wear the tether or some today, but it's not a punishment. It's so you and I can get used to it in case we need it, OK? Because in the race, I might get tired and I might need you to help me, or you might get tired and, I, and you might need my help, OK? I thought he was insane. Even someone without a disability couldn't go from nothing to an Ironman without, like, essentially killing themselves. One more time. Down. Up. There were other doubters, too. When Grebe sought the advice of his own Ironman coach to help create a training plan for Chris, the coach refused. Coach says, no, I'm not designing a plan. I said, why not? He said, he just, he can't handle the ocean swim. It's too dangerous. And, and then he's going to fail. And then I said, um, do me a favor. Let me just answer this question for me. I said, if Chris was a 20 year old without Down syndrome, would you design a plan for him? He says, I would. I said, okay, I need you to give my kid the same chance you would give anybody else. That's his whole year plan. Every day he stands up there and writes down what he achieved for the day. Here are my three dreams actually to get this house 
I'm to get a car and then I'm to marry a smoking hot blonde from Chicago. And then the gore is um, Iron Man in November 7. We have to get 1% better every day. I came up with this concept called 1% Better, uh, a way to track progress a little bit at a time, not to overwhelm anybody, not to make it too big a deal. He's not making huge gains, but he's building small levels of foundation that over time become so strong that they overwhelm, and that when he completes this Iron Man, he can complete anything. His dreams become possible. Let's go. Chris had 10 months to prepare and train for the event. Every day is something, so he trains 13 out of 14 days, minimum three hours a day, maximum about seven or eight. With just a month before the Ironman, Chris had worked his way up to 18 mile runs. All the way, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, all the way. I'm ever. so proud of you, baby. That was the best ever. <laughs> How do you feel, baby? I need you. You need me? Okay. He's got an amazing dad that you can look to him and he's the one that said, don't worry, he'll pick it up. Give it a couple more weeks, he'll pick it up. What time is it? It's get down, baby! Are you sure? It's get down, baby! Are you ready for Iron Man? Yeah! You are Iron Man ready. Nobody gets in the way of Chris Nickich's dreams. I was nervous, because he had never done any of those distances on their own. Uh, and now he's gonna do all three of them at the same time. The time limit is 17 hours, and we had one goal, which is to finish on time. The way they were in my mouth, I knew that I had to uh, calm down, take a breath, and keep going. When we completed the swim, we were about 15 minutes ahead of time. So I knew that we, uh, we had a really good chance to finish this race. All right, Chris, looking good, buddy! He came off the swim fully prepared to tackle the bike. Hey, we fight through the fake pain, right? Yeah. We're gonna fight through the fake pain on the bike here. Yes. Have fun, buddy! Surprise everybody and show them what you got. We always say, in an Ironman, it's not three events, there's four events. There's always an additional item that shows up on these races, and you never know what that will be. Everything is going as planned until about 20 miles into the ride. Is there any bother in your feet? Take this off, take your shoe off. That's when one of those unforeseen moments, the feared fourth event, happens when Chris steps on a hill of fire ants during a nutrition stop. Ah, what's better? He had literally hundreds of ant bites. When the race was over, there was so much poison in his ankle that he had boils this big. One, two, three, go. Pedal, pedal, pedal. And then, about 50 miles into the ride, Chris begins to accelerate on a on steep brakes. descent. On your brakes. So I yelled out, Chris, slow down. And he heard me, and at the same time he grabbed his right brake, he hit a bump and he went into a skid. I could hear him make contact with the ground. I'm thinking, oh my God, this cannot be the end of this race. This is not how this story ends. Chris is standing up, literally going, Dan, I crashed my bike, I crashed my bike. And he's all excited, he's got a huge smile on his face. It really makes you an Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> you stop it, stop it. You stop it. You stop it. The fire ants had cost Chris nearly 25 minutes. Bike crash, another 15. Did it. Now it's just a run. A 17 hour finish time was suddenly in jeopardy. This is going to be the best run of your life. You sure? At the end of this run are your dreams. Hey, Chris, we're only 24 miles away from a six pack of Corona. He was keeping a pretty good pace up until about mile 10. At mile 10, he had slowed down to almost a crawl. Fighting exhaustion, Chris wants to release a tether that connects him to grieve for pacing and safety purposes. 
doing so could end his chances of finishing in under 17 hours. I know, you're not, no, you have to run, sir. Chris was so bad at that point that I think we needed to call in Nick. Come on, let's keep walking. Who's my boy? If I didn't go there and help him mentally, he would have quit. He said, Dad, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I remind him of his dreams. He says, I don't want my dreams anymore. I know it hurts, but you're not ready. I know we're like way behind. I know Let's go, wait. Run. Run. Let's go. Run. At first, I wanted to stop. Instead, I kept pushing through. I knew that uh, my dream was coming. Consumed by fatigue. Oh, no walk. Overwhelmed by pain. What's hurting? Feet. Chris battles himself and that 17-hour clock. It's blisters. OK, that's OK. Those are fake pain. Fake pain. It's real. As he wills his way through the final half of the marathon. Your dreams are right here. Because Chris processes patterns easier than mileage, to get back on pace, Grebe tried a new technique when it mattered most. We're going to run for 10 cones. We're going to walk for two. Let's right jog up there. Ready? Jog through. Just to just, the bridge. Just up to where all those people are. Come on. To Come the bridge. On. We actually started running faster miles at mile 20, 22 than we ran at 9 and 10. Come back to it. You're going home, Chris. You're going to be an Iron Man. Yes. As we finished, I said, Chris, this is your moment. Go have it. And I let him go ahead of me. Chris Bickett! And we heard those famous words. You are an Iron Man! The greatest thing that Chris did by crossing that finish line is he provided hope. I'm so Put proud of you. Put your hand together Dad, again! Right For the history of the nation! Oh my gosh, I'm Chris Bickett! Bickett. When I saw him coming towards the finish line, I started first thinking about other parents and their little kids with Down syndrome can now look at Chris and say, our child can accomplish something. He's my hero. He's always been. Just so proud. Sorry. <laughs> so Chris, when people tell you you can't do something, what do you say to them? I say, I'm going to prove you wrong. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.